it's uh, quite uh, a privilege to be with uh, some of the most successful people in the country, but quite a number of you I have worked with, and I'm happy to see that Meralco came here in full force because they built over 40 uh, preschools with us uh, in, in various uh, places. Uh, I see PLDT also, we built uh, communities with PLDT, with SMART, with in fact over 700 major corporations. And, uh, and whatever it is, uh, whatever recognition that we have received is basically just uh, an acknowledgement of the greatness of, uh, of the human spirit uh, when they believe. And I guess uh, uh, I represent a very ordinary Filipino without a claim to great fortune, business empire, or political power. And it is uh, my lack of interest in accumulating wealth and power for myself that has helped me gain the trust of some of the wealthiest and the most powerful people uh, in the world. And it's interesting that uh, last January, I invited one of the richest Taipans of Malaysia to visit our Farm Village University, where we're trying to raise social entrepreneurs from the most marginalized. We have uh, students with us who are children of uh, tricycle drivers, construction workers, uh, subsistence farmers, and uh, garbage collectors. And two of them are here with us uh, today. Uh, Vincent, uh, Vincent is here with me. He just he was with me in Paris last uh, last October, where he was invited to speak in 20 top universities, and he got a standing ovation at the World Forum in Grenoble. He's the son of a, f a garbage collector, and he is now a social entrepreneur in uh, raising uh, uh, free-range uh, native chickens with his partner from France, also Louis, a top student, master's degree in HEC, that's the Harvard of of France. So. This uh, Malaysian was so intrigued by our model that uh, he came in his, to visit us with his family and uh, he donated, he decided to donate 5,000 homes or worth 750 million. Uh, in addition to the 50 million that he donated, he built the, the, the biggest culinary school in Bulacan, again, for, for the poorest of the poor. And uh, so I came to realize I don't have to really be the best uh, uh, grant uh, proposal writer. I simply have to uh, articulate uh, a shared vision uh, to people all over the world looking for a purpose. Because we have some of the most successful people uh, who have uh, accumulated wealth. And uh, they want all that wealth not just to be inherited uh, for, for the luxury or pleasure of family, but also to really uh, be shared with others who are less fortunate. And so it is uh, when we, s that's Vincent Tansri, the owner of Berjaya, and uh, he is now organizing the biggest social business summit in, in Malaysia on May 9, uh, to gather about a thousand of the NGOs in Malaysia to present to them the Gawad Kalinga model of uh, inclusive economic growth and how big business now can convert their CSR to CSI, from corporate charity to corporate social investment. And uh, we know that the smartest people in the planet are always thinking of scale and sustainability. And so even with Gawad Kalinga, we started out from purely philanthropy uh, and, uh, and topped a lot on the uh, CSR of big corporations but we had to really use whatever competencies we had. I'm, my background is economics. I came from a poor family uh, in Negros Occidental. We never owned land or home or, 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 or car. But again, education was my way out of poverty. But I, 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 after finishing economics in Ateneo, working for, with Procter & Gamble for six years, learning uh, a lot of the corporate systems and, 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 and market strategies, I came to realize that I have to really w use whatever experience, whatever education I had, you know, to sell the biggest social enterprise, which is the Philippines. I wanted to now 
really build a patriotic market. You know, because uh, uh, we have no excuse to be poor as a country. So my purpose in life, I came to realize with all the opportunities given to a poor man like me, was to really end poverty. So I am also Catholic, but I believe in a God who was a squatter. So my mission is to unsquat the squatter. He was the son of a construction worker. So I'm a builder. So I'm, I came to realize that to achieve scale and sustainability, we have to build sustainable communities because it takes a whole village to raise a child. And uh, so given all of this knowledge, I was from a school that taught us how to be a man for others. And so I came to realize that that should not just uh, be expressed in terms of charity, making the poor object of charity, but really expressed in solidarity, making the poor as family. So I guess that was my first really big lesson in life. And as, as a father of uh, five children, I came to realize that unless we address poverty, our children will have no future in this country or the streets will not be safe for them. And I came to realize also that the threats to my children uh, were the men, because I have four daughters. And uh, development in this country focuses on women. Microfinance is mostly women. Microenterprise is mostly women. And, but I came to realize that the criminals are men, mostly. The, the rebels are mostly men. The uh, drug pushers, dealers, addicts are mostly men. So I thought that if we want to build something that is sustainable, we should not just take care of the victims. We should really go to the source of the problem. And it is the loss of our male human capital. But then I came to realize that those who are privileged with comfort and safety and wealth are afraid of the poor. So I had to really get the courage uh, to go back to where I came from because many poor people like myself forget where they come from, that the goal of education, the goal of, of business and career uh, oftentimes is to escape poverty. So I was able to, to transcend poverty but I came to realize that there is no sustainability uh, for the next generation if I do not go back and show them that if I can do it, then others can do it as well. So the first thing I did in 1995 when I started Gawad Kalinga with the biggest, in the biggest slum of the country working with criminals, with drug addicts, was to gain credibility. And uh, again, uh, I realized that the biggest problem would be myself. Anyone who tries to help the poor uh, oftentimes are suspected of running for a public office or are, are going to use them for some, uh, you know, scam or whatever. So anyway, I decided in 1996 to give up my credit card, my checking account, never carried money in my pocket for 20 years. Because I also saw us, you know, that uh, it was possible for St. Francis, it was possible, you know, for, rich, uh, for, for the rich young man to really give up material wealth so that he will be able to show, to gain trust. And because I am detached from money, I gain the trust of the wealthiest people in the world. I, I detached myself from power, I gain the, the trust also of uh, some of the most powerful people. I've been able to work with presidents, with, with vice presidents, with senators, from whatever political affiliation they had. So I had to stay away from partisan politics, I had to stay away from religion because uh, politics and religion are very divisive. So I wanted things to be inclusive. So first thing is build communities. Uh, land for the landless, home for the homeless, food for the hungry, but do it uh, aligned with corporate uh, objectives. So we were able to build with Procter & Gamble and then Unilever had to build their own and, 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 uh, and Colgate Palmolive, we worked with Smart and we also worked with, with Globe because loving the poor, uh, has uh, to transcend uh, business rivalry. And so uh, I guess when you're able to really build uh, uh, credibility and then make honor people who, who build it. And uh, so after building 3,000 communities, we are now happy to see that people who used to ask us to build it are now actually building it themselves. And we're happy to see that I talked to Mayor Abalos of Mandaluyong because we did this for, for the RFM group uh, in Buayang Bato. They're now 
trying to transform the slums of Mandaluyong, looking at Gawad Kalinga models. And uh, now, even in Leyte, we're happy that we are building typhoon-proof houses. In Leyte alone, we built about 4,000 homes. And uh, now our thrust is also food for the hungry. So today we're building about, we're feeding about 50,000 children all over the country. Our target is about 100,000 children every day. And we're happy also that we are supported globally. And uh, so I realized that I can build a patriotic market, whether it's for the humanitarian organization that they represent, or maybe it's for the Farm Village University that I'm building in partnership with France. So I'm building the first Farm Village University in Angat Bulacan in partnership with 22 French universities. And so I have uh, my team here. Can I ask uh, Louis, can you come here? And Vincent and Danilo. Danilo is the son of, uh, well, he used to be a squatter under the bridge of Baliwag. And he used to eat leftover food from the restaurants. But now both of them receive homes for Gawad Galinga. Uh, they're also part of our Farm Village University. <laughs> Vincent is a partner of Louis, and uh, Danilo uh, was with me in Malaysia and in Sabah because we're building the Enchanted Farm in Sabah. We're building Gawad Kalinga communities in Malaysia. And, uh, and uh, on May 9, we have been invited by Berjaya uh, owner to go back to Malaysia to meet with all the, with the uh, NGOs in, in that would come. But I think for Danilo, who used to be a, both of them used to be thieves because that's what people do to survive. But now they're producers, they're now entrepreneurs. And Danilo is also flying with me uh, in, uh, in, in June to France and Switzerland. Uh, so they both speak French. And this is our curriculum. We teach people, we give the poor not not charity, we give them the gift of excellence, the gift of, of quality, the gift of class. And uh, so I'd like them to say to you, just to greet you in, in French. So, bonjour à tous. Um, C'est un plaisir de vous rencontrer. Je m'appelle Vincent, j'ai 18 ans. J'habite à la Perme Oshanti. Je suis un étudiant de CID. Maintenant, j'habite à la Perme Oshanti et je travaille avec Louis, avec les poulets. Bonjour à tous, je m'appelle Danilo et j'ai 20 ans. J'habite à la Première Enchantée depuis près de 6 ans. Avant, j'habitais sous un pont et, et mes maçons ont été détruites par le typhon en 2009. Euh, merci. So, yung mga mahihira, we gave them, uh, now they can speak French, they speak better French than the students of Harvard and Yale. Okay, and now we'll ask a Frenchman who comes from the Harvard of France, he comes from HEC, the number one business school in Europe, and he will speak to you in Tagalog. Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. So, wala pa, wala pa. So, ako po si Louis, dalawang put, apat taong gulang. Dumating ako dito mga dalawang taon na, kahit dapat anim na buwan. Pero bago pumunta dito, wala akong alam talaga sa Pilipinas. Ang alam ko lang, GK. Hindi ko alam Manny Pacquiao, Ann Curtis, wala. Kahit Alda, wala. Pero talaga GK alam ko, talaga titutunit alam ko. So, taga ako sa isang mayabang na business school that doesn't have any partnership with Ateneo o Lasal. Kasi masyado siya mayabang. Pero na yun, meron kaming dalawang students taga school nila. nag na sila sa France sa school ko. Sila ang first Pinoy to pass in this school, to get into this school. So I'm very proud today to say that my school is actually studying the Philippines. It's going to be studying human nature. It's going to be studying from them. So, salamat po. So, ito po ang produkto. This is the product of, uh, of Danilo. It's OGK. It's made of oregano, honey, ginger, and calamansi. Uh, this is coming right after our success with Bayani Brew, which is now being distributed in a thousand stores. But this is my, uh, this is my medicine also for cough and, and fever. So I've not had fever for the last year, but it will enter 7-Eleven mini stop by next year. But this is being distributed now in human nature stores. One third of the business is owned by Danilo. 
So the former squatter under the bridge, the one who used to eat, you know, will eventually hire people from the school where I come from. So uh, we, we realized that we have to really flip the pyramid because the mass base is the pyramid. And so they are the untapped market, the untapped human capital. And uh, so as an economist, I see that unless we really uh, overcome our fear of the poor, we will just treat them as maids, as drivers, never as drivers of the economy. And, and so we have to build the Farm Village University. And I'm happy that uh, last October 24, Human Nature was chosen in Paris as the most sustainable beauty brand pioneer in the world. So we beat Wileda, Givaudan, L'Oreal, and, and, and companies that have been around for more than 100 years. So just shows that the genius of the Filipino. And uh, last April 6, my daughter was uh, Anna Wilk, who's married to a British guy. Uh, she was chosen in London as the woman of the year for the entire beauty industry of the world. And, and the award was given also on the day that she was giving, she, she's delivering the, her sixth baby. So she's breastfeeding, she breastfeeds six children, but at the same time, she's president also of a Filipino brand that has become now a global cosmetic brand. And we're happy that we can now claim that we are at par with La Mer and Clarence and all the top beauty brands in the world. And uh, it's important for Filipinos to realize that because the world already knows it. And so two weeks ago, I was in Lille because the Catholic University of Lille put up their social business chair with me as godfather, you know, because now they believe in uh, this model of inclusive growth from Asia. And so we have to get global branding, but we have to build a patriotic market just like Japan. Because Japan after the war used to really make lousy products. But the Japanese just kept on buying and buying until today they have Toyota, they have Mitsubishi, and uh, they have Sony and so on. And just like Korea, 50 years ago, we helped Korea after the war. But now Korea has Samsung, they have Hyundai, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, because they also built a patriotic market. The Filipino has a, the Philippines has a colonial market, and unless we 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 realize that we are not just good enough to be executives, to be consultants of big global brands, that we can actually build a Filipino global brand. And today we don't have really a popular Filipino global brand, and that we are hoping because right now three big companies are running after human nature after we won both London and, and, and France. And then America also certified us with 60 products as natural. So we have the most number of natural products in the world. And that's from the Philippines. The thing here is the world knows it. I'm not sure if the Filipino does. You know? And that is, again, for us to realize, because we're here, it takes Richard to really help us realize our full potential to create wealth that does not leave anyone behind to remain poor. And so I'm just uh, uh, amazed that the top, they are children of the rich. Uh, and, uh, Fabian, can you come over here, please? So Fabian here has been with us for six years. He's the first Filipino toy maker to enter Toy Kingdom. Ironically, he's French also. You know, so this is his, his product. Oh, mag, mag, magbati ka na rin sa kanila. Tagalog din, ha? Oh, Magano gumaga sa inyong lahat. So, ako si Fabian, ang sabi ni Tito na anim na taon ako dito, na no, plano ko dapat tatlong buwan. Uh, but it seems to be a pattern, you heard it before. Um, I was very interested in the previous conversation and previous uh, speakers. I don't know if I comply with the seven points because I don't think I chose the right industry. I mean to stuff toys, which is not one of the fast growing industry here in the Philippines. Um, I don't know if I have the knowledge, I don't know how to use a sewing machine, but I do have a website already, so those are things we're doing. We're available on Lazada. And one of the market to experience, actually, we're making corporate giveaways. So I'm also hoping to partner with small corporations and make their mascots, like the mascot for Miralco and the mascot for Air 21. Those are products we can actually do, and it provides jobs to all seamstresses in, uh, in Bulacan and in other provinces here in the Philippines. Thank you. So uh, we expect the French to be pouring investment in the Philippines because it's investing in people. And the brightest of the French, I stayed in Louis Villa in Normandy. I could not understand at first how the, 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 the most uh, privileged of France 
employers of Filipino nannies would decide to leave France to live here in the Philippines with the families, you know, of, uh, of, of, of people who his greatest aspiration is to be a nanny abroad. And so what we're trying to really uh, prove here is that it can be done. And we're happy with our meeting with President Duterte because he now wants to replicate also. He has built seven villages with us in Davao. He now wants to us to replicate the Enchanted Farm, our hub for social entrepreneurs in Davao, in Negros, in Iloilo. Our target by 2025 is to raise half a million social entrepreneurs, SMEs. Because we want to think that the poor may have small pockets, but they don't have small brains. We just want to give them big dreams. Okay? And just like these guys who only learned how to speak French and English uh, a year ago, but are now being invited all over the, the world. They are now the image of the Filipino who will end poverty. And so thank you for this opportunity to present our view from a different lens. Thank you very much.